Well, I know it's about a year from now, and it's going to be a long road to get to that point, especially watching WWE's current product in general. I have to confess that already I am pumped up and excited for the potential and the possibilities of WrestleMania 32. I truly, truly am. I'm just so geeked and so amped up and so pumped up about this and to a surprising level, frankly. I mean, it's a year away. And you know, as a wrestling fan, me specifically, I'll always be looking ahead to Mania because that's the big deal. That's the creme de la creme. That's the ultimate showcase piece for the business. But man, am I looking forward to WrestleMania 32 more uh, now than any show that I could think of in quite some time. Maybe the possibility of Rock vs. Cena at WrestleMania 28 would have been uh, an example of me looking forward to it so much a year from now. The difference being, though, is that, that that was just one match. And I'm looking forward to so much more when it comes to next year's Mania. You're going to have it in that magnificent shrine to Jerry Jones's freaking ego AT&T Stadium. So you know the WWE is going to set out in that shrine to set a WrestleMania attendance record and an indoor attendance record. You know that's what they're going for. You know that's the ultimate reason why they're having this show at this place at this time come next year. They want to do big, dramatic things. And when you look at the recent success of WrestleMania, WrestleMania 30, a show most people liked and thought was good, and I kind of agreed, even though I said it was the yeah, but WrestleMania, it still was a WrestleMania. It delivered like a WrestleMania. And WrestleMania 31, which seemed to surprise so many of you and have so many of you thinking it was a good or even great show, even though I don't just don't agree with that. At the end of the day, as a general scope, as a general rule, it seems like the consensus was the last two WrestleManias were good to pretty good. So now you come in with the goal and the mindset of trying to set a WrestleMania attendance record and an indoor attendance record on the heel of the last two WrestleManias. That's got to lead you to think that the WWE is going to take this show seriously and already is taking this show seriously and already is planning this show out a year in advance more than any show they have done in quite some time. When you look at some of the potential matches that are being talked about, just the three that people are talking about the most, and that doesn't mean that all three of them are going to happen or even two of them are going to happen. It could only be one of them is going to happen. But when you look at some of the potential for possibilities of what they have, you've got Sting versus The Undertaker. What more really needs to be said? Two icons, two legends, it's never happened at WrestleMania. It's never happened in the WWE. What the hell could happen? Sting versus The Undertaker. Again, worthy of any WrestleMania, no matter the time, and most certainly would help towards that goal of achieving a WrestleMania and indoor attendance record. Then you've got the thought and the possibility out there of Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey. You've got the uh, corporate face in some ways of WWE going forward in Stephanie McMahon. Uh, versus the UFC and their arguably biggest star not named John Bones Jones and Ronda Rousey. You know, perhaps the most significant, important women's match in WrestleMania history. Is it going to happen? Who knows? But the thought of it, the potential of it, is exciting because of the different things that could happen, the different ways that they could go. Just the curiosity of how they would get this done. Now, there are things that I might not like about it in terms of the thought of putting UFC over on WWE television or on WWE's biggest show of the year. But there is still a lot of potential and possibilities for incredible entry with Stephanie versus Ronda Rousey, especially when you look at the mainstream attention that that match will garner. That will be the match that this show will be built off of the backs of if it is scheduled and if it happens in terms of getting the most notoriety and the most mainstream publicity and attention. It's not going to be Sting versus Undertaker. It won't even be The Rock versus Triple H. It's going to be Stephanie versus Ronda Rousey. But then you look at The Rock versus Triple H. Yes, these guys wrestled a lot over the years. They were even part of a four-way at WrestleMania 2000. But at the end of the day, something that's never happened is having these two guys go one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. And most well, certainly based off of what you saw at WrestleMania 30 and even before for that, it would lead you to believe that The Rock versus Triple H is most certainly at least penciled in, if not penned in at this point in time, for WrestleMania 32. And there's still a lot of appeal there. There's still a lot of attraction to seeing, in my opinion, that match at WrestleMania. While it 
these three matches don't do a lot for the future of the company, they do at least feel WrestleMania worthy. If you're building your WrestleMania card next year off of the backs of these three matches, I think you're starting off in a very good position in a very good way. And I also know with WrestleMania 32, as it was very similarly with WrestleMania 30, as I talked about before WrestleMania 30, it's all hands on deck. That means that Vince McMahon, knowing that WrestleMania 30 was so important because of the launching of the WWE Network, and therefore that's why it had to be all hands on deck there, Vince has ego at stake. He has pride at stake. He has WWE's name and reputation at stake. And he knows goddamn good and well that WrestleMania is his baby. And his baby's at stake. He's going to do whatever, and I emphasize again, whatever it takes to establish that he's still swinging the big stick, goddammit. He's going to do everything he can again to make sure that not only do they achieve a WrestleMania attendance record, but they get that indoor attendance record. It's going to be all hands on deck. You know, you could definitely believe that Chris Jericho most likely will wrestle at that show next year, especially with it seems like their cozy relationship for the WWE and the way Jericho seemed to transition into a bit of a shill for them. I don't give a damn what anybody says. If you're in this business of professional wrestling, sports entertainment, why in the bluest of blue fucks would you turn down the opportunity to be a part of perhaps the biggest show of all time? I doubt Chris Jericho is going to do that. You know, there's going to be an offer out there. We know there's an offer out there for Shawn Michaels to come back and wrestle one more time. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But you most certainly would have to think he's going to be involved in the show in some way. Same thing with Stone Cold Steve Austin. They don't have the greatest relationship, it seems like, whatever the case might be. But it's WrestleMania 32. You're going to be in Dallas, Texas. You're going to be in the backyard, the home state, so to speak, of Stone Cold Steve Austin, one of the biggest stars in the history of the business. Somehow, some way, I'm going to have to believe cooler, logical, sane heads will prevail, and Stone Cold will be involved with the show next year, as will Hulk Hogan. Like I said, it's going to be all hands on deck. All legends you could throw at this is going to be one big spot fest of legendary awesome. And then you look at some of the other names that could be involved in the show. I didn't even mention Brock Lesnar. You know he's going to have some type of featured match at WrestleMania 32. Now, could they be transitioning to The Rock versus Brock and doing Triple H with somebody else? Maybe Shawn Michaels, maybe somebody else entirely, part of the newer generation? Perhaps. But you still have that possibility right now is that you've got Rock, Triple H, Stephanie Rousey, Sting, Taker, and you still got to find something for Brock Lesnar to do. You know, when you look at John Cena, the thought is he could still be United States champion, perhaps, by the time WrestleMania 32 comes around. And that might be the point in time where you would actually have somebody beat him and go over him at WrestleMania 32 to become the U new U.S. champion. Who would that be? Maybe somebody like a Kevin Owens could be that type of guy. You know they're going to have some type of important match for somebody like a Randy Orton. The Breakfast Club takes care of Breakfast Club business come WrestleMania. But you know with Randy Orton come WrestleMania, he could deliver at least a solid to decent WrestleMania match somewhere in the lower to middle portion of the card. And you look at some of the faces from the next generation, the Seth Rollins of the world. You know he's going to have a big spot come WrestleMania 32. You know Roman Reigns is going to have some type of big spot come WrestleMania 32, you would assume. Bray Wyatt will probably have at least a decent spot at WrestleMania 32. And hopefully the WWE will come to their senses and find a way to feature Dean Ambrose strongly come WrestleMania 32. When I look at some of the possibilities of what they could do with that next generation, when I look at the thought of it being truly all hands on deck, when I look at the thought of the matches that already appear to at least be penciled in for WrestleMania 32 and the potential for some of the other matches, and knowing what the company is going to set out to do with next year's show, yeah, I can't help but be excited. I can't help but be anxious for next year's show. Whereas with WrestleMania 31, my expectations were incredibly low. For WrestleMania 32, at this point in time, it's the exact polar opposite. My expectations are sky high. They are through the freaking roof. So it's going to be really incumbent upon the WWE to make damn well sure that they deliver and they make this show next year the WrestleMania of WrestleManias because a lot of things are pointing to that it could be and, frankly, that it should be, almost especially of all, for what the WWE wants to accomplish and what the WWE needs this show to represent, it needs to be that WrestleMania of WrestleManias. And I can't wait to see what happens come next year.